Hey everybody, welcome. Um, I'm going to go a little bit rogue today, uh, review a game that I otherwise wouldn't normally cover on this channel. Um, eh, but I've had precious little time for gaming this past couple of weeks, so um, I thought I'd introduce you to an old friend of mine. Many of you will already be familiar with it. Um, I think I was about nine years old. Uh, during a rainy day recess at school in the fourth grade when me and some friends were first introduced to the game I'm going to share with you today. Um, again, many of you may already be familiar with it. It is Nuclear War. <laughs> uh, it is a darkly humored card game uh, for two to six players, really two to more. Uh, this is one of those games where really the more the merrier uh, in terms of number of players. Um, it is designed by Doug Malawicki and published by Flying Buffalo Incorporated. They're still around. Um, this is probably the third printed version of this game that I have owned. I understand uh, there's been a recent successful Kickstarter. Uh, this game has been around for decades. It's just celebrated its 50th anniversary. Uh, so, without further ado, let's get to the table and have a look at Nuclear War. Okay, here's what you get with Nuclear War. Uh, you have different types of cards that you'll be using throughout your play. Uh, you have a spinner, and you have four play mats. Uh, for you know, that you can reproduce at will depending on the number of players you have and you have a single piece of paper uh, printed on both sides very small printing uh, honestly the printed rules that come with this game aren't the greatest they're a bit ambiguous but uh, you know the game's simple enough that you and your buddies you're playing with should be able to work it out let's have a closer look at the different types of cards First, you got your delivery system cards. Uh, these are your missiles and your bombers. And on the delivery system, system it will tell you uh, how big and how many uh, warheads uh, a delivery system can carry. For example, the missiles can carry one warhead each. And the warhead can be no bigger than what's listed on the card. So, for example, this Polaris missile uh, couldn't be paired up with a warhead larger than 10 megatons. You got a B-70 bomber, which is a bit unique in that you can combine any combination of warheads adding up to 50 megatons uh, behind it. And we'll see how the B-70 bomber works a little closer uh, when we do a little turn example. Um, all right. Here we've got our warhead cards. These are the explodey things. Uh, they are of different sizes. Uh, each warhead card denotes how big the warhead is and how many of your enemy's population it will destroy. Uh, you'll be pairing these up with a matching delivery system while waging nuclear conflict. There are propaganda cards uh, that you'll play normally. Uh, problem with these is they are only good during the rare moments of peace during the game. Once war has broken out, propaganda cards don't do anything. They serve to kind of clog up your hand, make your decisions a little bit more difficult. Uh, but during times of peace, you can play them, and you'll simply follow the effect instructed on the card. You've got secret and top secret cards. Uh, there's really no difference between secret and top secret, the way they're played. Uh, you don't hold secret cards in your hand. You play them the moment you draw them. Um, and this is some flavor text down at the bottom. Uh, you simply follow the instructions denoted on the card. Usually it will be to deliver some sort of horrible disaster on one of your enemies. Occasionally these secret cards will deliver a disaster upon you. There are a precious few anti-missile cards in the deck. Uh, if you're lucky enough to get one, uh, 
anti-missile cards can be used to shoot down enemy attacks against your country, and the types of delivery system that the anti-missile is capable of shooting down will be noted right on the card. Uh, once an attack has been announced against you, if you have one of these in your hand, you would play it immediately to shoot down that enemy attack. And then you've got several small population cards. Uh, population cards, these are basically the currency of the game. That's right. Human beings are money here. Uh, <laughs> um, Component-wise, these honestly are really bad. Um, they're small, they come on a single sheet of cardstock that you have to cut out by hand. Uh, they're hard to shuffle, uh, hard to randomize, but, you know, they are what they are. I understand that uh, the newest version of Nuclear War, the newest printing, uh, these have been upgraded to full-size playing card size cards. So, uh, but yeah, um, these are your population cards. So to start the game, <clears throat> depending on the number of players, uh, you're going to deal out population cards to everyone, and players keep their populations a secret, and you're going to deal out nine of the shuffled nuclear war cards to each player. And then in the middle of the table, you'll put the remaining population cards to form the body bank, or the glow pile, or whatever other tasteless name you choose to give to it, and the remainder of the nuclear car war cards as a draw pile. Um, <clears throat> then what happens is each player looks at their hand of cards and takes the secrets and the top secrets. And beginning with the owning player, or whoever you designate to be first, uh, each player will take their secret cards and carry out the instructions on them. So here I've got... Uh, Two million of my highly moral little old ladies rebel against my country's military policies and disgustedly drive off in their electric cars to the enemy's country. So I'll just uh, throw this in the discard pile and I will take two million of my people and I will choose another player to give them to. Yeah, we'll give them to Jimmy over here. And what else we got? Ah, population explosion. Your country's population increases by 5 million. That's good. So, for this, since it doesn't tell me to take them from an enemy, I'll just take them from the body bank. So my population will increase by 5 million people. And we always want nine cards in our hand, so we will draw two more. Oh, another secret. And you just keep doing this until you have no secrets in your hand. So, ah, super germ. A blunder in my enemy's germ warfare experiments destroys 25 million of his own people. All right, well, okay, we'll discard that. And Jimmy already hosed us by taking two million of our little old ladies. So, oh, this is bad. Let's see, there's 15, 20, 25 million of his people are now dead. And they go in the discard pile. Draw another card, no more secrets. Okay, so now the play moves on to the next player. Uh, each player will do this same procedure, uh, getting all the secrets out of their hands. Now, once everybody's got all the secrets out of their hand, uh, next you determine, beginning with the owning player or whoever you decide goes first, uh, start determining what your strategy is going to be. Now, I've got a couple of these propaganda cards, and right now it's peacetime. Nobody's uh, dropped any bombs yet, so uh, we'll go ahead. We put two cards face down. We'll start with a propaganda card, see if we can get some use out of that. And uh, then we'll prepare for war. Each player 
places two cards face down. Once everybody has determined their initial strategy and has two face down cards on their mat, the beginning player will draw a card from the draw pile, add it to his hand, then add a third card to his face down area, and I think we'll pair up a 20 megaton warhead with that Atlas missile we put down, and turn up the top card and carry out its instructions. Here it's a propaganda card. I get to take 10 million enemy, denounce their form of government for years. So I get to choose one of my enemies to take 10 million people from. And once you move your following cards up, then you choose another face down card. So as you can see, you're kind of planning your strategy a couple turns in advance. Once you put a card face down, you cannot change it uh, unless peace is declared uh, either by destroying uh, one of the players or unless everyone at the table agrees to declare peace. Uh, so we've got that done. We've carried out our propaganda card and then play moves to the next player clockwise. Whenever a player draws a secret card, it can't be held. It must be played immediately. You play the card, follow the instructions, and draw again. So all players have completed their initial turn. Uh, looks like a propaganda card was used. Uh, one of my enemies launched a bomber. Another one of my enemies launched a Polaris missile. The turn comes back to me. The first thing you do at the start of a new turn is draw a card and add it to your hand. Turn up the next card that's face down. I'm launching an Atlas missile. And then place another face down card. Play moves on to the next player. So, play has gone around the table again. There's been another missile launch. Successful nuclear attacks have been carried out, and I've taken a hit. Uh, state of War now exists, and propaganda cards are now useless. And now it's my turn. So, how do you nuke somebody? Well, you turn over your next card, and... Of course, you've paired up an appropriate warhead to go with your delivery system. Whoops, forgot to draw my new card. You're going to move your other cards up. Once you turn up a warhead, you announce your target. And I think I'm going to drop this 20 megaton warhead on Billy over here. So. Let's take a closer look. The 20 megaton blast destroys 5 million people. We're going to spin the spinner and see what additional effects may happen. It may be a dud and uh, our attack is unsuccessful. <clears throat> uh, maybe fallout kills additional people, radioactive beta rays, um, dirty bomb, double the yield. Um, one quick thing, if we were dropping the big 100 megaton bomb and hit the nuclear stockpile tripling the yield, that would actually destroy the entire Earth, meaning that everybody loses. So we spin the spinner, see where it lands, ah, dirty bomb, double the yield. That's 5 million for the warhead itself, another 5 million for the dirty bomb, double the yield. Billy loses 10 million people. And they get thrown into the body bank. And if something happens to your spinner, or if you just don't like using spinners, uh, they give you an option for using 2d10 or 2d6 to determine the uh, additional effects of your nuclear attacks. That's pretty much how turns proceed. Um, one little 
couple little things. You got your deterrent force areas here. Uh, these are optional. Uh, you can place face up cards uh, to deter enemies uh, from attacking you. Um, perhaps you've got a really good anti missile card uh, and you want to discourage an enemy from launching that big Saturn missile or something at you. Uh, you might want to put that face up to discourage him. Uh, also, maybe you've got the Saturn missile with the big 100 megaton warhead. Uh, you can put those face up. Just let anybody know who attacks you that uh, that may be what waiting for them. What may be waiting for them if they uh, if they mess with you. Let's briefly touch on the B-70 bomber and a special ability that it has. Uh, it can carry any combination of warheads up to 50 megatons, and this is how it works. Now, if you want, you could use it in a more conventional method and pair the B-70 up with a 50 megaton warhead, drop it all at once on a single opponent. But then the B-70 is used, it's done. Or, or I can drop 10 megatons on one player, and then on my next turn, rather than have to launch a new delivery system, drop another 10 megatons on another player, and then on my next turn, I can drop, drop 20 on that guy, and then on my next turn, another 10 on that guy. I can spread the 50 megatons out however I want before that B-70 is finished making its attacks. And now here's one of the things I love about this game. Uh, when the last of a player's population is destroyed, he's out of the game, but he gets final retaliation. Combine all the cards in your hand and make one last huge attack with everything you've got. You can spread the love around the table if you want, or you can focus all of your attacks on one enemy. Perhaps get some revenge for the player who took you down. Whenever a player has been knocked out of the game, uh, all the other players, if they want, uh, it's automatically a state of peace when a player's been knocked out of the game. So maybe you've got some propaganda cards clogging up your hand. You can take all of your face down cards off of your play mat. Uh, face up cards, it's too late, they've already been played, they're gone. And uh, you can uh, rejigger your strategy and maybe uh, get rid of a couple of those propaganda cards uh, that you've been wanting to get out of your hand. And the ultimate object, of course, is to be the last one standing. You may be down to your last million people. You may be the sole inhabitants of a blasted nuclear deathscape. But hey, what matters is victory. So, nuclear war. Obviously not the typical game that I cover on this channel. Uh, but, um, as you can see, obviously not solo friendly, um, even two players, uh, you're really not going to enjoy the game that much, I think, because you're just going back and forth between the two of you. You really need at least three, I would say the sweet spot would be four or five, uh, for a good game of nuclear war. Uh, really the more the merrier. Um... There's no deep strategy here, no deep tactics, uh, no complicated mechanics. It's just, uh, it's the ultimate beer and pretzels, um, crack jokes, inappropriate if possible, uh, have laughs, stick it to your buddy kind of game. Um, really enjoyable. I love the theme you need to have the right crowd uh, of players to enjoy this game. I mean, let's be honest, the theme is pretty dark, but it's all done very tongue-in-cheek. Um, and, and if you think that
they're mature enough to handle the theme. The mechanics are such that uh, this is a game even young kids can enjoy. I mean, obviously, I started playing it when I was nine, so... Um, a few little things that you might get hung up on. Um, the population cards, uh, depending on... It, it's inevitable. Somebody's going to get hosed and end up with only a few million population. Uh, you know, redeal, or, or, or you can house rule it to where everybody starts out with the same number of population. Uh, but, you know, this game's really easy to house rule to your liking, but uh, just a really fun, enjoyable, relaxed game. Uh, you know, a lot of folks don't like the stick-it-to-your-buddy aspect. I love it. It's that kind of game. It's meant for big laughs. Um, and, you know, it's possible nobody will win. It's possible, uh, you know, you may destroy everything. Um, but of course, you want to be the last one standing at the end of the game in the nuclear wasteland. So, uh, anyway, big thumbs up for Nuclear War. It's an old classic. I love it. Uh, my friends love it. Uh, it's just a great old game. Been around for decades. I, I, I think this is the third printed version of Nuclear War, uh, that I've, that I've owned in my lifetime. Um, and it just, I believe, completed a successful Kickstarter for its 50th, 50th anniversary uh, with upgraded artwork, uh, upgraded population cards. They're full-size cards now, from what I understand. Um, there are a few expansions to Nuclear War. I have one of them, uh, Nuclear Escalation. Um, it adds additional new cards... Um, additional options, but uh, my favorite is still is still the old classic, the original Nuclear War. Um, I'll provide a link to Flying Buffalo's website uh, if you want to look into picking up a copy. Uh, warning: uh, Flying Buffalo's website is archaic. It is Byzantine. Uh, I think it's kept that way on purpose. Uh, uh, you can go over and see what a what a website looked like back when Al Gore invented the internet, but uh, <laughs> um, yeah, fun game. Um, that's going to be it for Nuclear War. Uh, I hope you'll join me over on my YouTube channel. Uh, be sure to hit that subscribe button while you're there. Also, you can join me over on ClubFantaside.com. Uh, books, games, reviews. Uh, Kickstarter announcements, all, all sorts of fun stuff going on over there. Uh, and in the meantime, that's going to be it for Nuclear War, uh, designed by Doug Malawicki and published by Flying Buffalo Incorporated. That's going to be it for today, everybody. Thank you for joining me, and until next time, happy gaming. <laughs>